Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a list of birthdays or anniversaries in Microsoft Access using the month, day, and date serial functions. We'll generate a list of birthdays within the next 30 days or coming up this month. Today's question comes from Jillian in Reno, Nevada, one of my Platinum members. Jillian says, I'm in the restaurant business. We ask our customers for their date of birth so we can give them a free dinner on their birthday, but most people only give month and day, not the year, and that's okay. Problem is, how do I store that in my table? Also, how can I tell who has a birthday coming up in the next 30 days so I can send them a gift card? Well, this is a good question, Jillian, and I get asked this a lot. How do I make a list of upcoming birthdays? so I can send out promotions or whatever. And since my birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks here, let me go ahead and, and answer your question today. Couple of prerequisites first. If you don't know how to use query criteria or parameters in queries, go watch these videos first. We're gonna use this stuff in today's class. I have two videos on my website, on my YouTube channel, they're free. Go watch these first, then come back. Okay, so here I am inside my Tech Help free template. This is a free download from my website. You can go grab a copy if you want. I'll put a link down below in the link section down under the video. Go click on it. Now, in my customer form, in my customer table, I've got a customer sense date field. Okay, now we can pretend this is the customer's birthday if you want to, and that happens to be mine. I put it in there, but it doesn't matter. Any valid date field. Let me start by showing you how to do this. If you have a full valid date, and then I'll show you this, the, I'll answer the, the first part of your question last. How do you store just the month and day in the table? We'll get to that in a few minutes. But first, let me show you how to determine who's got a birthday coming up if you have the full birth date. So let's go and make a query real quick. Create query design. I'm going to base this on my customer table. And I'll bring in the customer ID, first name, and their customer sense field, which we can pretend is their date of birth. And if you want to even change this to DOB, you can, like DOB colon. That's called an alias. Now, when you run the query, that'll show up as their date of birth. Okay? But that doesn't really make a difference, so we'll get rid of that. Okay, so if I run this, there's my first name and their customer sense. Now, I don't want to have any calculations on customers who are missing a birth date, because that will generate errors. So we're going to say customer sense has to be is not null. All right, that means I don't want to see anybody who's missing a birthday, okay? Now, let's say you just want to generate a list of people who have birthdays this month, okay? So I want to isolate the month part of this date field. For that, I can use the month function, okay? So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to type in birth month, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see this better. Shift F2, zoom in. All right, the birth month is going to be the month of customer sense. All right, use the month function and send to it the customer sense date value, and that'll pop out the birth month. Now when I run this, there are all the months for these people. See, I'm October. Similarly, there are other functions to get the birth day, right? Birth day is the day function of cust whoop, customer sense. I can't type today. All right, there's the day part. Here, I'll zoom in so you can get a look at that too. See, birthday is the day of customer sense. And Access puts the little square brackets around. Don't worry about that. Okay, so that's month and day if you want to separate that. So now, if you want to give me a list of all the people who just have uh, birthdays this month, just come down here in the criteria and say this has to be equal to the month of whatever today's date is. All right, so the date function, right, that, that puts today's date there and it sends it to the month function. So now if I run this, I see just me because I'm October. So it's, it's, and it's currently October. Okay, see how that works? And you can do the same thing with day. You can put a 23 in here and see just the people who have birthdays on a specific date. Now, this is why I said if you know how to use a parameter query, you can put a parameter here that says enter the month like that. All right, that's just enter the month or enter month inside of square brackets. That's called a parameter query, which you know because you watch my parameter query video. Okay, and enter month will be prompted when you run this. So run it 
Enter month. I'll put 11 in there. And there I get everybody with a birthday in November. Okay, so this right there will show you how to get a list of birthdays next month if you're okay with typing in the month. So if it's currently April, you type in a five. There's all your May birthdays. And yes, there's also a year function you can use to get the year. But for this example, we don't care about the year because we don't, we're, this is for their birthday every year, not just a specific year. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this. Let's save this query real quick. Save this as birthday, birthday one Q, we're going to call that. All right, we're going to do something else now. We're going to come back to this in just a few minutes. All right. Now, let's say in your customer table, you have just the month and day of their birth, which is the first part of your problem. Okay, so you've got birth month, which I'm going to store this as a number. Okay, and down here, long integer is fine. Um, get rid of the default value. And we're going to set a validation rule where this has to be between 1 and 12. Okay. Then I'm going to go, and you can put down here, you know, must be between uh, 1 and 12. And this is called a validation rule. I've got separate videos on how to use validation rules. I'll put a link down below if you want to go watch those too. And then, of course, there's the birth day, which is also a number. Get rid of the default value. Because I don't want a zero showing up, right? If they don't enter anything, they don't enter anything. We don't know what it is. That's okay. It's never going to be zero. All right. For this validation rule between 1 and 31. Now, does this mean they could type in a combination like February 30th? Yeah, they could. Can you prevent that? Sure. It does involve some programming. All right. And I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. But it's... It, this is good enough for most instances, right? All right, so validation text, right, must be between 1 and 31. So let's save this and then save changes, yes? All right, existing data violates the new set for the validation rule. That's okay. Okay, and then we come back over here. It's just basically saying that the, the data that's already in here doesn't meet those validation rules. That's okay. All right. So let's put some stuff in here, uh, birth month, day, and so on. I'll put it on the November in there. Okay, so now we've got some people's birth months and birthdays. And yes, that's how I'd store them in the table. Because you can't type in, if you're going to use a valid date field, okay, you can't type in just month and day and leave the year blank. All right, so the only way around it easily is to store it as two separate fields. Now, knowing this, how can I calculate this person's birthday this year? Well, let's go over to another query, create query design. And again, we'll bring in the customer table. I'm going to bring in customer ID and first name. And this time, let's bring in their birth month and birthday are two new fields. So it looks like this now. Okay, and again, put your is not nulls in here. So if you have anybody who you're missing data for, it doesn't mess up your calculations. All right, in fact, let's, uh, well, I'll just leave it like this for now. I won't make everybody confused. Now, how can I put together a date based on this stuff? Well, I have the month and I have the day and I know the year, right? It's the, it's the year of the current year. Okay, so... To put together a valid date value based on the components, based on the constituent parts, we use the date serial function. So I'm going to call this birthday this year, colon. I'm going to zoom in, shift F2. All right. It's going to be based on date serial is the name of the function. And it takes three bits of data, the year, the month, and the day in that order. Now, the year is the tough part. We need to use the year function of the current date all right so take the current date give me just the year and stick that there so it'll be right now 2021 okay comma what's the birth month well that's a field birth month and so is the day birth day there we go this will get replaced with a 2021 when the when the function runs like that and then this will get replaced with the 10 and that'll get replaced with the 23 let me put that back hold on go 
back. There you go. Okay, so I'll hit OK now. And now when I run that, there you go. There's this person's birthday this year. Now it's easy to calculate who's got a birthday coming up this year within the next 30 days. All right, how do we do that? I'll show you in just a second. But first, a little tiny advertisement. If you want to learn more about time and date functions, my Access Expert Level 27 and 28 classes cover all the date time functions in detail. All right, date time now, records from today in the past or future, not on a date, between two dates, outside of a date range. We'll set up an aged accounts receivable using different date ranges, right? Less than 30 days, 30 to 60, more than 60. Records with times, without times, birthdays from now until the end of the week, all kinds of stuff. Expert 28 covers all the advanced stuff. Date add, date diff, date part, date serial, displaying ordinals. How do you display first, second, third, all that stuff. Calculating someone's age, all right? Birthdays for next month in a lot more detail that I'm going into right now. All right, so that's ex access expert 27 and 28. Okay, commercial over. So how do I get to see just people that have birthdays coming up in the next 30 days? Design view. Right down here in the criteria, we know when their birthday is this year. Now we just put in here between today's date and date plus 30. I'll zoom in so you can see that. See? Between today's date and date plus 30. Or if you want to go between tomorrow... And 31 days in the future, that's fine too, because figure today's probably already gone. If you're going to send them an email, right? If you're going to send them a gift card, maybe bump, bump this up by like seven, since you know how slow mail takes. All right, now when I run it, I'll see everybody who's got a birthday coming up within the next 30 days. Oh, that's me. Look at that. What's well, today? The 8th. My birthday's on the 23rd. So I'll be accepting all of your birthday cards and wishes. Thank you very much. No, <laughs> just kidding. Now, going back to the other example, all right, we, we, we've solved this for Jillian because she, she stores birth month and birthday, but let's go back to birthday one. Uh, save changes to this. Uh, yeah, we'll call this birthday two just because I saved the databases for my gold members and they can download them. Let's go back to birthday one for a minute. Let me open this back up again. All right, so we've got customer sense. We know their birth month and their birthday. So now again, we can calculate the same thing based on this, because we have their, their pieces taken apart. In fact, we can go back into here, probably just copy this guy. Let's copy this. And let's go design view, and let's paste that here. And there we go, it works. Because I made birth month and birthday, the names of calculated query fields here, right? We're determining that based on the customer sense, and we're using the same values in this calculation right? Birth month, birthday. So instead of being fields from the table, these are calculated query fields. And it works the same way. Let's do a quick test real quick, just to come in here, change someone's birth date. I'm going to change this. All right, we got birthday here. Let's make this one 11-2. Because 11-14 wouldn't fall within, today is currently October 8th, and it wouldn't fall within that 30-day range. Now it should. Now, be careful though, because I've got birth month and day over here. The other query, query one, is based on this. Mine and I have both the same, so we have to remember to change this to 11 to, let's make it 2003 or whatever. All right, so they're both the same. So let's check our queries now. All right, birthday one looks good. Birthday two also looks good. There they are. So that works. Now, the next question that people always say to me, where are we here? Where's the dates? The next question people always say to me is, okay, I don't necessarily want the next 30 days. I want the next calendar month. If it's currently October, then I want to send out my cards for November, from November 1st to November 30th. How do I generate that list? That requires a little bit more work, still with the date serial function, but there's a lot more explanation I have to give you. And I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. Want to learn more in the extended cut for the members? I will show you how to make that list of birthdays for everybody who have birthdays in the following calendar month. So if it's currently October, you'll get all the birthdays from November 1st to November 30th, regardless of the year, of course. So, you know, early in October, you'd, you'd send out your cards for people who have November birthdays coming up, not just 30 days in the future, the whole calendar month. Then we'll do table level validation where I'll show you how to deal with that issue 
that I talked about where you can prevent someone from typing in February 30th, right? 2.30 or, or uh, 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 April 31st, those kinds of things. We'll do table level validation. Then we're going to go over a nasty bug that I discovered that I'm going to send to my list of things that Microsoft needs to look at. <laughs> but I'll show you how to get around the bug that I discovered. That's all coming up in the extended cut for the members. 25 minutes long. Silver members and up get access to all my extended cut videos. Gold members get access to download all of the databases, the templates that I make in these tech help videos, plus access to my code vault. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select All to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.